Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sitting in here, I'm all hopped up on chili and new fishing gear. Uh, it's one of those things, you know, Black Friday rolled around and I picked up a few things. I have not bought any new um, fly fishing gear for years, I don't think. I, I think the last time I bought anything uh, major was probably four years ago, three years ago, four years ago, something like that. Anyway, I went ahead, I pulled the trigger, picked up, a new, this is a Moonshine, this is their Outcast Salt Edition, it's an, in a nine weight, uh, nine foot nine weight, so I picked that up, picked up a matching reel to go with it, a Waterworks Lampson, it's what I use on my um, six weight, so I'm really happy with it, I really like their conical drag system, um, so uh, I think this is going to be really, really good as well, so, so I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to show you guys how I set up my reel, um, you gotta get the backing tied on, gotta get the, uh, I'm actually going on this one, I'm going with a shooting head, um, and a running line. So, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and on these ones here, the cool thing about these ones, they're, they're a sealed bearing system, so you can go ahead and check that thing out. So this is the, um, this is their Lightspeed, uh, G5, and this one is like a 9 a nine plus. I don't know if I can focus there. So this is a nine plus. Anyway, it's a, it's a sealed system. So the way that these come apart is you just got to get right down in here in the spool, and it takes a little bit of force, but you just you just push it apart. Whoop, doing it the wrong way. See, and right in here, just give it a push while holding onto the cage, and then there we go. So. Super lightweight, um, uh, you know, I, I hope that it, it should balance okay, uh, you, you know, but it's it's really nice when you're out there throwing heavy flies, not to be lugging around a big reel as well, um, unless that is sort of your, your balance point that you're looking for. But I'm gonna go ahead, uh, let's get the uh, backing tied on. So for the backing, I just picked this up off of um, Amazon Max Catch. Uh, I believe it's, this is 300 yards. So this is 300 yards of 30 pound uh, gel spun bagging. And um, it's gonna be my first time using this brand. This is what I could find. You know, I have a feeling lockdown and things like that are going on again here in California. And just like last time, everybody made a run on fishing gear. So um, anyway, you can see what that is. Uh, it's high visible. Uh, it's like a neon green, yellow. Uh, I, I don't know. It feels really nice. We'll see how it is. If, if the only thing with gel spun, a lot of times with a 30 pound uh, that I've seen is that if you don't have it spooled tightly, then what could happen if you get a fish that runs into your backing? It can bury that line into uh, everything else that's, that's wrapped on there and it can actually cause you know, tangles or cause you to lose that fish. Um, hopefully I don't have that problem. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But let's go ahead. We're gonna get this tied on here and then uh, we'll do our running line and then our shooting head. All right, here we are. Um, I am a left-handed retrieve, so I, I retrieve with my left hand. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if you have like a reversible spool or something, you wanna load everything to actually go in the right direction for you. Um, but what I'm going to be doing here is this is just going to be a basic arbor knot, but I'm going to double it. Okay, so I'm just going to take it once, loop it once, loop it twice. And now I'm going to be tying a basic slip knot. And the way that you tie a basic slip knot, um, it's just an overhand knot. So I'm going to take this line here, right? I go over. under both lines, right? And then now I'm gonna go back over this loose end, I call it the tag end, and then I'm going to come back through here. So you see that? So it's just a basic overhand knot, and I'm gonna actually take it one more time just because I like to double everything. This is gonna be a double overhand knot, and I just doubled it one more time. So now I can tighten that up, and then I've got this end right here. And if I don't do anything with this end here, 
then that could pull through. So um, again, just tying an overhand knot. Right there. Okay, and now I just pull this tight. So you can see, I can just pull this tight. And as I pull it, that will cinch up against that other knot that I tied right there, right? I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back out so I don't scratch up any of that, that coating there. There we go. It doesn't have to be super close, you just don't want it to interfere with anything. And now I'm just gonna put this back together, just make sure your line's on the right spot. Simple squeeze, everything pops back in place. Okay, and then it's just a simple, put some pressure on it, work it back and forth. You want it to wind evenly. So I just work it back and forth like that. All right, and I'll cut back in when I get to about 200 yards. All right, so once you get about halfway, because I know this spool's about uh, this spool's 300 yards, so once once I get about halfway, I can figure that I'm pretty close to being at that 150 to 200 yard point. Um, that's where I like to be. I mean, if, if I have something that runs me out for two football fields on on this. I don't know if I want to be bringing that in anyway. Nah, nah. It, it could be fun. <laughs> and if it ever happens, <laughs> hopefully I get it on video and I tell you guys, hey, I made a mistake. I should have put more backing on. But I'm going to save this right here because I'm actually going to put some new backing on another reel. And so I'm going to save this, uh, this excess here. And then um, go ahead and I'll, I'll show you how to tie that, that loop in here. So... This is the running line that I'm going to be using. This is uh, the Airflow. It's their super dry. Um, I believe it, it's like one to two inches per second is what it sinks. So uh, again, I'm setting this up for the ocean. So turbulent water and things I want to get underneath the waves in case it gets choppy. But Lost Coast Outfitters, if you guys ever get a chance, these guys are phenomenal on the phone. Um, you know, I'm... 300 miles away from them and they set me up here when I called them they were able to basically go to their shelves put it in a box and um, you know ship it out to me and it wasn't too much I mean $45 so I got $45 here and $50 on the the running line so or on the uh, the shooting head uh, so was that 90 bucks if I would have bought the saltwater setup I was looking at the Orvis saltwater setup the one I wanted there was like 130 so um, anyway, enough of my rambling. So here, here's how we're going to do this. Now, these are really cool. Um, most, most nice fly lines down at all the name brands. They've got a welded loop in them. And so we're actually going to save ourselves a whole bunch of trouble. The hardest part is getting these little twisties out. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay, probably should have left one of those on there. But you see what I'm talking about here, when I'm talking about it's got a welded loop. So that is actually welded in there. I no longer have to worry about tying a nail knot or different things like that to get it through my guides. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I actually learned from Bread's Fly Shop. Super cool guys, again, they're the, uh, they're the outfit that I bought my, um, my Reddington rod from my four weight that I do most of my fishing with actually. Right, so we're just gonna come out here about, I don't know, about nine, 10 inches, right? Uh, depends on how you estimate your fish, right? This right here, this might be uh, 18 inches. I don't know how you guys are, but if you got a ruler, right? About five, 10 inches, or about nine, 10 inches. Uh, what we're gonna do here, you wanna keep everything straight-ish. You want your loops to loop right so overhand knot so you just twist come back through you see that and we're actually just going to do this three times so it's a triple overhand knot triple surgeon's knot however you want to look at it but keep your lines pretty flat okay and then we're going to pull this pretty close down to where we started you gotta wet it 
right? Just like everything else. Right? And then we just cinch that down, cinch that down solid. Okay? So we got a pretty nice smooth knot here. And make sure you cut your leftovers. And you can cut this one pretty close. I need to get my nippers out. But there we are, we're cut pretty close there. So now we've got this big loop. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and this is how you get the, the, the line to actually lay down right, um, go through your guides and everything right. You wanna put your backing through your fly line here, right? So backing through the fly line, you're gonna actually let this Come on down here with plenty of room. Okay, so you see that's the whole length. But then, the reason we left that loop so big, is because now I can just take this, pass that through, right? And then as I pull it straight, I got a nice, beautiful connection there. And I can go ahead and take that running line, fly line, whatever, and load it up on my reel. So let's go ahead now, I'm gonna do that. Oh, and in case you're ever wondering, they usually have tags on them as well. This one here, make sure you take that off before you wind it up. Cool, now here we are. You can see this is exactly what they did as well. They've got a welded, uh, large welded loop in like that. So you can, if you're ever changing out your fly lines on the go, you don't have a spare spool or anything like that. This makes it so much easier. They actually make kits that you can run these up on uh, to store them and then you can run your your reel and everything through it and drop it in another one and you just reel it back up so uh that's always a cool investment uh if you get a little extra money hanging around it's a lot cheaper than a spare spool almost as fast so we're going to take this and it's just like before so here's our here's my shooting head here this is my saltwater shooting head from brio um this is their uh 375 gram uh hopefully it loads up this rod pretty well. I wasn't able to find any loading specs, but that seems to be, um, you know, right in there. But you can see all the details here. You know, nothing special. You can uh, fine tune everything with the shooting head. You can fine tune your running line. You can fine tune your um, uh, shooting head. You can fine tune all of that stuff to make it the easiest possible for throwing those big flies, all right? So these here, same idea. To get this Same off. idea, we're gonna find this tag here. It says attach this into shooting line, which is another fancy word for running line. But same idea. We're gonna take this one, okay? We're gonna take this one here and we're going to run it onto the other line. So we run it down on this line here, take this whole spool, send it through. Right, and then your whole spool. Right, just pulls tight like that. All right, you'd be like the cool kids, leave your tags on, but please take your tags off. Otherwise, you will have a mess. All right, and just keep reeling. Well, there you go. I got everything all spooled up. So you can see there, nice pretty colors through that. Um, if I can find it here. So this one also has a welded loop there you can see it's got another welded loop so that makes it really easy whenever you're trying to attach um, you know some uh, tapered leaders and things like that that are pre-built for it makes it really nice um, keeps you, you you know in the water longer and as we all know you can't catch fish if you're not in the water so um, that's something to consider whenever you're looking at this it's maybe for that all those other fancy setups maybe like an extra thirty dollars so in my opinion, it's worth it. Oh, and if you're looking for dimensions, okay, my run, running line, so, uh, my backing on this nine weight reel, I put um, I put about probably between 150 to 200 yards of backing on it. And then my running line, this was 30 yards, so 90 feet here. And then my shooting head, okay, my shooting head here was 30 feet. So. That gives me about 120 feet total of fly line before I get into my backing line, uh, which I, I think is, is plenty for what I'm gonna be doing. Um, you know, Corbino, Surf Perch, and things like that. Um, but 
I will in the future, I will be doing some other videos on how I tie things. Um, you know, different flies and stuff like that, how I tie those on there and all that stuff or tippet recommendations. So these are things that uh, in the future, uh, hopefully we get to get out on the water. I had a spot set up at a um, site with my trailer. I was gonna do some fishing and everything's been canceled. So I uh, gotta find a way to get out there, you know, makes it tough, we wanna be responsible. But then again, you also gotta kinda of think, you know, fishing out by myself, who's it really hurting? Uh, Again, use your best judgment on that. I'm not advocating for anything. Um, all right, well, if you guys enjoyed it, if you found it useful, uh, some of those tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I've got lots of fishing videos. I have a, I've got lots of how-to DIYs and things like that. Um, I work on my truck a lot. Uh, I've actually got a few truck videos coming out here in the future. So check those out. And uh, again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.